So in our daily activities, when we drive a car, heat our home, uh, use a, a telephone, each of these has effects on the climate because it leads to emissions of things that are called greenhouse gases, particularly CO2, carbon dioxide. Those then get into the atmosphere and change the climate. It, it's a very slow process, but when billions of people are taking millions of decisions over decades and decades, it adds up to a lot. So this has been known for many years, but we now have our models of economy and climate so we can track economic growth in different countries and the effect that has on climate now and into the distant future. So then the next linkage is back on the economy, which is as the climate changes, this leads to impacts in different areas. For example, as the climate warms, certain effect, there will be certain effects on agriculture, particularly in warm areas, that the crops may not grow so well. There, in the coastal areas, there will be rising ocean levels. Um, there's also will be issues such as more intense hurricanes, and therefore more damaging hurricanes, and the list goes on and on. So you see the economy affects the climate, but the climate comes back. It's not just the economy, it's actually the economy plus things we do in our daily life. Could be health effects, could be vector-borne diseases that spread because they're in hot areas, and then also on the natural world through affecting our forests, our ecosystems, uh, perhaps our species of different kinds such as birds. Uh, the linkage then is to link them. What we want to do is link that so we change our economic structure to slow the emissions to reduce the damages. And so what we've done in our economic modeling, it's not just the work I've done, but people around the world in different, mainly different universities, but also different institutes, has been to build models that makes these, make these linkages precise, make them build on good empirical studies, good science, good economics, good observation, good data, good physics, and to actually be able to understand as best we can the, how these linkages operate and what they actually look like, not just qualitatively in the way that I'm talking, but quantitatively so you can actually figure out what the effects are going to be. And then also quantitatively in terms of policies, what kind of policies we need to try to contain the rapid and slow the rapid growth of climate. So uh, that's that's what I and many of my colleagues have been working on now for many years. Um, we're now waiting for governments to take actions. I think it's clear what we need to do. We need to raise the price of carbon through a carbon tax or a cap and trade system, cap and trade system. So our governments need to, they need to get with it. They need to really get on board and to take the steps. And then when that happens, uh, the people, the firms, the companies, the researchers, the universities, the profit-making entities will begin to respond. And we will find that curve of carbon emission and the curve of climate damage tilting down. So that's, that's what we hope to do.